God, first of all, we want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for being, for, thank you for being God. Thank you for loving us, God. Thank you for waking us up again and starting us on our way. Thank you for brand new mercy, God. Thank you, God, for life, health, and strength, Father. Father, we may not have everything we want, but we thank you for the things that we do have. God, we thank you, Father God. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless your holy name, God. Lord, we we love you, God, and we come to you this morning. In the name of Jesus, you said two or three are gathered in your name. You would be in the midst, Father God. And, Lord, I'm asking you to touch each and every person on this prayer line, God. Lord, I ask that you touch God in a mighty way, Father. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, you see the needs of your people, God. Lord, you see what they need. You see them, God. In the name of Jesus. Father, I ask that you answer each and every prayer request that is on this line on this morning, on this afternoon, Father. In the name of Jesus, God, you see the, the prayer request. You see the those that talk to you in their secret prayer closet, God. You see their heart, Father, God. Lord, in the name of Jesus, whether it be natural or spiritual, Lord, I ask you to answer each and every prayer, Father, God. In the name of Jesus, God, we come to you by faith, Father, God. For you are our source of everything, Father God. And we thank you, Father God. Lord, I ask you especially to look on our leaders, Pastor Chantel, Pastor Trey. Father, I ask that you bless them, Father God, in the name of Jesus, abundantly above all that they could ask or think, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for placing them in our lives, Father God to be our leaders, God, to be our shepherds, Father God. We thank you for them, Father God. Lord, meet every need, not just in their natural life, their spiritual life, and their church, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for them, Father God. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father God. Father, I ask you, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, to look on this country. Lord, as, as we see another president, uh, coming in for our office, Father, we may not agree with the election, Father. Some of us may not agree, and some of us do, Father God. But, God, you know all about Donald Trump, God. Lord, and I ask that you touch his heart, Father God. I ask that you help, help him to do right, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I ask that you save him, Father, in the name of Jesus, God. Open up his heart and his understanding, God, in the name of Jesus, God. In the name of Jesus, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I ask that you, God, look on the man or woman of God that is going to bring the word on today, God. Lord, I ask that you touch them in a special way, God. Give them exactly what to say and how to say it, Father God, in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, oh, God, let it be a, a word that will be received by everyone, God. And Lord, let it let it convince, God. Let, let it deliver. Let it heal, Father God, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, God, I also look on any of those, Father God, today that are, hallelujah, that are seeking jobs, seeking employment, God, in the name of Jesus, God. And, Lord, I even stand in for myself, Father God, asking you to look on my interview today, God, that you would lead and guide me what to say and how to say it, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Lord, there's some of us, too, God, that need a miracle, God, and I ask that you look on the needs of your people, God, Lord, that you answer these right now prayer requests, God. We know you to be a right now, God. Lord, we know it doesn't take you a long time to do anything, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we ask you to make ways out of no ways, Father God, in the name of Jesus, yes, Lord. Lord. And Father, I ask that you touch each and every one, God, regardless of what we're going through, God. Lord, give us a mind to continue to pray, not just for ourselves, yes, but for others, God. Give us a mind to seek your word, God, in the name of Jesus, no matter what we're going through, God. Give us the mind to praise you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank, Thank you, Lord. God. Thank you, 
you, Lord Thank Jesus. you, God. Let's all praise him. Let's all give him the praise. Thank Hallelujah. You. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Thank you. Praise you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Sister Jackie. Amen. Thank you, God. Thank you, Sister Jackie. We thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Good afternoon. This is the power break, and we are about to tap into the spirit. Amen. I'm excited because Sister Jackie laid a foundation in prayer. She took us straight to the throne room. I'm going to start reading right here in Psalms 1, amen, starting at verse 1. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season whose leaves also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. Now, I just need for you all to understand what just happened. Amen? Yesterday we had an awesome word from Sister Marcel, and she tapped into the spirit, amen, and she was talking about us getting back to loving one another, getting back to having relationships with each other, getting to a place where we can show the compassion of God, the love of Christ, and we can forgive each other and still minister to each other. We can see someone in need and be willing and able to be a blessing to them. Amen? To encourage them, to strengthen them. Yeah. But today the Lord is talking about us moving and operating in the way of the righteous. You know, we are called the children of God. But so many of us are walking around as if we are popers, as if we were orphans or fatherless children. But we have a heavenly Father who truly loves us, who truly, without a shadow of a doubt, is concerned about everything that concerns us. He's already planned out our days and even our lives before the foundation of the world was ever created. But we never want to think about consulting him. He tells us always not to listen to the ungodly, not to listen to the world, not to follow in the path of sinners. But yet, we refuse to call on him. We hear a good word. We get encouraged for the moment. We turn around, and we forget all about it. We get discouraged. We get complacent. We get slothful and lazy. But most of all, we get content in our mess. And we don't strive and push ourselves to be better. We don't strive and push ourselves to do more, to study more, to pray more, to get in his face more, to get to a place where our relationship with him is not work anymore. It's a pleasure. It's not forced. It's a habit. It's a lifestyle. Because the moment we get to that place where consulting with God, hearing him speak to us and give us instructions and directions, it becomes second nature. We're not having to press into the spirit or in his presence because we're already there. Our very conversations become prophetic. Our general conversations back and forth with ourselves, with other people, our interactions with our neighbors, with our coworkers, literally, the Lord is right there in the midst. We won't have to sit there and say, let me pray about a situation because we will instantly be tuned in and connected. But we have to meditate on his word, on his laws, day and night. Meditate on it. We all want to have success. We all want to be like those trees that are planted by the rivers of living water that spring forth in season and bear fruit. But in the drought, we don't wither up and die. In the storms, we don't break. We may bend, we may bend, but we don't break. We're strong. We're rooted. We're grounded. Even when the flood waters rise, our roots may be uncovered a little, but they're not dug up. Mm -hmm. We're swept away because we're rooted and we're grounded. But how many times have we allowed the world to shake us, to cause us to have emotional tantrums and emotional fits? How many times have we allowed ourselves to get distracted, 
by the things that are going on around us and not focus on what God has called us or told us to do. There has to come a season where there's a maturing. And at this point, we are at that season. If you never, ever had a true, serious relationship with God, this is definitely the time that you should be working on it. This is definitely the time that you should be pursuing a relationship with him, pursuing his presence and his faith. Because guess what? This world is about to change. The world that we grew up in, the world that we have known up until this point, it is about to change. And who's to say that it will be for the better or the worse? All we know is there is a great change on the horizon. Are we prepared for the influx, the large group of people that are about to come running to the church for answers, running back mm. to our Father for the answers and for understanding, for clarity? But here's the catch to that. Our lives have to resemble and look like Christ. The way we think, the way we operate, our character, our morals, the way we respond has to look like Christ and not the world. We can't look like emotionally unstable individuals who are <laughs> hellbound and still being consumed by this world. Or else people are going to wonder, where else can we go? Because clearly the church is not the answer either. That's why so many of them may come to the church, but they don't stay. They'll walk in the front door, and they'll leave out the side door or the back door. They'll join the church because the Lord touched their heart, and there's something there that they need. And then they encounter one person with a negative attitude, and they don't want to come back. Because, see, they, they're immature. They don't understand that the church is a hospital, and everybody in there has issues. Everybody in there is an yeah. ex-something and still dealing with something else. They don't understand that hurt people and broken people hurt and break other people. They don't understand that just like they came in there because they were in need of something, that every person that's in there is in need of something. And Christ is the answer. All they know is they were told to come and that they would find help. So we've got to get us together first. It's time for us to start taking introspective looks. What am I doing in my life? Who am I connecting myself with, surrounding myself with? Are the choices that I'm making, the decisions that I'm making, am I still swinging through the Holy Spirit, through the Word of God, through prayer? Are my responses to the things that are happening to me, around me, and about me? Are my responses showing people that God is still good, that God is still able? Because the moment you can answer those questions and say, yes, everything that is going on in my life, I understand that it's a God thing. I understand that it's bigger than me. I understand that God has a plan. And when I begin to operate in the fullness of his plan, the fullness of his power and his strength operate within me. So his super is placed on top of my natural, and the extraordinary begins to happen. Or are you still stuck in that place where the world is not able to distinguish whether or not you even know Christ, whether or not you call him Lord and Savior? Does your life reflect and look like his child, prosperous? Benefiting all, blessing others, encouraging others, even when you're discouraged. It's time for us not to look for comfort and complacency. It's time for us to begin to press. It's time for us to move past what we know and are familiar with until the unknown and to live boldly for God. I challenge you all. Ask the Lord today to give you an opportunity to live bold for him before man, before the world, and watch he'll give you the chance. It may be something as simple as you being able to tell the truth about a situation. And because you were able to tell the truth, 
and impacted someone else's life. It may be as simple as you being able to bless someone in a grocery store. They may be short a couple of dollars and have to put some stuff back, and you have a few extra dollars. Bless them and tell them, Jesus paid it all, and he loves you. When people thank you for what you're doing, tell them, don't thank me. All glory be to God. He did it for me just like he did it for you. It's time for us to get past ourselves. It's time for us to get past our situations. It's time for us to begin to look beyond what we know. Because truly, this world is about to be turned upside down. And if we, the body of Christ, are not ready to receive the world, then we will have failed in advance of the kingdom of God. We will have failed in what he's called us to do. So as intercessors, as prophets, as leaders in the body, as worshipers, as children of God, it's time for us to be able to present our Father's kingdom, to present his family with power and grace, forgiveness and love, mercy and strength. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this time together. We thank you, Lord God, that you've given us instructions. You've given us your word. You've given us our basic instructions before leaving this earth. And as we read and meditate on it day and night, Lord God, help us, Lord God, to begin to pull verses from it that will hold true. Pull out your promises, Lord God, that we can hold on to. In the times of struggle and stress, Lord God, help us not to act and respond like the world, but help us, Lord God, to seek your faith to call upon your name, Lord God, to trust you, Lord God, in situations that don't seem favorable. Help us, Lord God, to call upon you when we get weary and well-doing. Help us, Lord God, to continue to move forward. Now that we've placed our hands upon this plow, we're not going to be moved by what we see on the left or on the right. We're going to stay focused and committed to what you've called us to do. Give us our instructions. Make it clear. Make it plain. And use us for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. I thank you all for joining us today. I'm excited about what God is doing. There is so much that God is trying to get us to do, so much that God is trying to reveal to us and show us. If we would just but open up our hearts and our minds to receive it. We love you all. We're looking forward to seeing you all tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right back here in the virtual church for SWAT training, where we can become spiritual weapon advanced training specialists together, where we can become disciplined students, disciples of Christ. Amen? Bring your questions, your Bible, a notepad and a pen, and an open mind and open heart, ready to receive what thus says the Lord. We love you all. Go forth and have a blessed and prosperous day in the Lord.